Mr. President, we have a very special ceremony today, and J.J. Quinn will uh, introduce you. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Sir Anthony Ackman. Yes, hello, Mr. Mr. President. Mr. President. Nice to see you, as always. Good to see you. This gentleman needs no introduction. Can't get me quite that easily, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. J.J. Quinn, Mr. President. Good to see you. Secretary Webb. Good to see you. Good to see you in the first thing of the week. Mr. Charles Adams. Hello. Good to see you. Mr. Peter Stanford. How do you do, sir? Major James Forsyth. Hello, Mr. James McAllister. And Commander Dave Cash. One of the President. That's the uh, new uniform required by the president. I, I know he has, he has a special command. <laughs> Well, Mr. President, the National Maritime Historical Society is proud to join with the World Ship Trust in conveying the Maritime Heritage Medal for presentation to our nation's most famous ship, USS Constitution. USS Constitution carries a message reaching out over the horizon, as Admiral Harley Burke wrote in our journal, Sea History, and that message does indeed reach out to future generations of Americans. USS Constitution is the flagship of the historic ships movement in the United States. These ships challenge us with the high hopes and high endeavor that built the United States, a nation born of seafaring. Past generations of Americans struggled to make sure that the Constitution delivered her message to us in our time. In 1830, Oliver Wendell Holmes delivered the appeal that saved the ship from the scrapyard when it was mistakenly thought that her useful life was over. With his spirited poem, Old Ironsides, he, he meant the American people to keep her ensign flying, and we did. We're here to, today to salute that ensign and to keep it flying in our time and in time to come. Mr. President, Mr. Weidenberg, Mr. Secretary of the Navy, Mr. Stanford, gentlemen, Admiral of the Fleet, Lord Lewin, so who, as you know, has done much for the preservation of historic ships through the World Ship Trust is sadly much to his regret unable to be here today. But he asked me to take his place, and I am, of course, delighted and honored to do that. We are, of course, celebrating this year the 200th anniversary of the Constitution of the United States. And 10 years later, the ship bearing its name was launched. In good time, I might add, in passing for the War of 1812, when it engaged more than one British vessel. <laughs> But another famous ship from that era, the HMS Victory, like the USS Constitution, remains on active service. And both are visited each year by very many American and British citizens. Both, Mr. President, are symbols of the commitment by the American and British navies to the cause of freedom and navigation. The medal itself, sir, has just arrived from Britain. It's a beautifully carved and engraved piece of pewter housed in a box which is in itself a work of art and which is made from wood taken from the USS Constitution. It is the fifth World Ship Trust Award and the second to an American recipient. And this is a fitting tribute to <coughs> respect which the United States pays to its naval heritage. All those involved, Mr. President, are so delighted that you personally have been willing to make this presentation, and we thank you. Well, I thank all of you for the, for the honor of being able to do this. And uh, Commander Kackman, yes, sir. as the commanding officer of the ship, I'm very pleased to present this Maritime Heritage Medal to you on behalf of these societies that have been mentioned here. And I think it's very fitting that in this, our 200th anniversary of the Constitution, that uh, we recognize this on the 190th birthday of the ship. The medal that's not really? fastened in that laid in the back. There it is. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'm greatly honored to receive this on behalf of the crew and all those who have worked so hard to keep the Constitution of Victoria all status that it is. And gentlemen, I thank you all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. It does seem strange that some of our modern day vessels are put away in more calls much earlier. <laughs> this is done very well. Sure. Yeah. That's 
and blessed to have it from the board of the Security Council. Lovely board. The significance when that came in, I did not know that the wood was from the You know there are some British timbers in this wood also. There was a British sailing ship that was lost in the ice on a rescue mission toward the North Pole. And it was abandoned. Some years later, the whaling captain found it and brought the ship out. The United States refurbished it and delivered it to England. And then, sometime later, uh, and we delivered it to Queen Victoria. Sometime later, a 1,300 pound package arrived in this country, and the ship had been decommissioned, and the ship's planks had been used and cut. Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's only had to be one thing, one addition to it that happened during my administration. You notice that little bottom line around there? Well, people were really smaller in those days. <laughs> <laughs> I found that I couldn't get up the desk without bumping. <laughs> So our workmen added that one additional layer at the bottom to kind of raise the desk. Well, <laughs> so that was comfortable. Uh, no. I'm glad as a British burnt one or two timbers in this house so that <laughs> some other <laughs> British timbers have come back yes. to decorate their office. Isn't that, isn't that, 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 amazing that panel in the front with the, uh, with the uh, seal, seal on it, that is the, that's the little doorway that uh, John John President Kennedy's son. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, put a seat up on the desk, but you couldn't get a piece of under it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Congratulations. check your passing form, but uh, Game Ball presented President Ronald Reagan from Chairman George Allen, December 17th, Oval Office, Washington, D.C. For your leadership and achievements throughout your administration, creation of the National Fitness Foundation, development of the United States Fitness Academy, establishment of model youth fitness camp programs for kids, kindergarten through six, and the signing of the first USA-USSR Youth Fitness Exchange Agreement, and that's the first time you ever saw a ball that had the Soviet flag on it. Huh? Yes. Well, thank you very much. Huh? Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's... Let's see your grip. Let's see. Oh, he's got the right grip. Yeah, he's got the right grip after all. See, he's got two laces, fingers on two laces, and his hand is index fingers extended, you see? Oh, yeah, this is Mrs. Allen. Yes. Hello, Mr. Yeah. President. Yeah. And, uh, Mr. President. Okay. And you met my son, George. Good to see you, Mr. Yeah. President. Do you want me to hold that while you do the family photo, or do you yeah. want to have it in the picture? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we should have it in the picture. All okay. right. Okay. Let's do something different. Uh, Probably you go. have two of you all step up. You have to rearrange. Okay. So I'll one can get right on your side of the president. Okay, terrific. Thank you. I want you to have something entirely different. You know, buddy, I know you got a lot of things that are different. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, I want to tell you, this isn't terrible of me. I shouldn't tell you this, but when you notice this in the passing, yeah. I played right guard, and I tried to, because you know the right guard pulled out of yeah. the I tried to convince the coach once that we ought to have a play, but when I pulled out, yeah. instead of interference, I got the ball, because I could outpass all our back feet. Oh. <laughs> I never could convince him to do it. <laughs> well, you had the correct technique. You should have given you a chance. The guard option. <laughs> coach, yeah. the guard, yeah. that would be interesting. Yeah. 
Mr. President, I have something else for you. For your library, uh, this is the, the agreement between the State Committee on Fiscal Culture and Sports of USSR and the President's Council of Fiscal Sports USA. And this was signed, uh, this is for agreement, Soviet USA, Soviet Youth Fitness Test, 9th day of February, 1987, Washington, D.C. The story of this exchange was brought about through the vision and leadership of President Ronald Reagan. And we have a little flag there, a gift from Coach George Allen. Yes. Uh, While well, I'm in the brass plate there, somebody named George Allen had a lot more to do well, than I did. if it hadn't been just for you, I wouldn't have been here. <laughs> so I, I uh, <coughs> we just get a picture of this. Um, Run up the gang in again? Yeah, sure. Oh, sure. Why not? Right. Okay, just one more. Right um, Thank you. No, I tell you, uh, there were times, Mr. Freshman, as you know, when I thought, how do they ever get into this thing? And, and the, reason, uh, the reason I stayed and stuck it out was because of you, because of uh, my belief in you and the job you're doing. And that's the way we feel about you. And uh, well, thank you. And uh, Nancy. Well, thank you very much, man. And a few souvenirs. All right. I think I ought to tell your family there that I have a little memory of him back when I was governor and my son was about to be high. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. There was a game at the end of the season that didn't mean anything anymore. The yeah. game had been decided. Yeah. And uh, the Rams kind of began to come unglued. Yeah. There were some cynical people sitting around us in the stand yeah. saying, well, you know, the game doesn't mean anything, so they're yeah. probably not trying and all yeah. that. And my son was a worshiper, yeah. and he was bleeding. Mm -hmm. And when the game was over, trying to ease his disappointment, I told him that we had an invitation to go to the locker room. Mm -hmm. Well, down we went, and we walked into the locker room. And I couldn't have asked as a father for anything greater for a small boy. The guys in there were jumping on each other and themselves about how lousy they were and all of this. And he said, all right, let's say thanks. Yeah. And my son saw those big hulks dropping to their knees in right. prayer. Yeah. And uh, it's a good memory. Yeah. Yes, and it was a very wonderful day. Now for you ladies, these are key rings. They're different than the one they're going to get because these are from Nancy. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's very yes. lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. much. That's lovely. Thank you. Beautiful. Please give my best regard to Mrs. Reagan. I sure will. Tell her I admire her a great deal. Well, thank you. She has a lot of courage. I just went through the same thing she did, and I know what an effort it is. Yes. But I was, I had the luxury of not having to have any public <laughs> appearances, you <laughs> see, and she did have that. And really, I feel a lot for her. Both of us this last year kind of had a public pulse taking by the yeah. right, right, right. George, you know, George was uh, the Republican leader for you. Well, Chairman of Young Virginians for you in 1976. 76. And of course, in 80 as well. <laughs> and he just got reelected. Virginia legislature. Well, that's great. And I know you don't remember all this, but the one thing I remember that you did is I had a knee operation in the hospital with phlebitis. And you called me in 1979. Is that right? Yeah. I did. You had the whole, you know, you had all the nurses. This was before you were president. Yeah. You know, had I all the nurses at Twitter carrying <laughs> on. God, you got it right. The NBA is helping make laws. Yeah. My son. Yeah. Used to go through red lights, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't that tragic? Oh, the, the, the worst. <laughs> well, it was wonderful to see you. Anyway, we really appreciate you taking the time to see us. My pleasure. And thank you for okay. running our country right. and for doing all you're doing for us. Well, we admire you. We're, uh, sometime along the way, we'd like to honor you at a banquet for Man of the Year in either New York or L.A. Would you consider that? I hope the people are listening. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because others kind of decide where I'm at. <laughs> what I'm going to do with it. Thank you. Oh, right, thank you. Usually, uh, usually he and I do a few push-ups or set-ups, but no, we won't do that. No, no, no. Do the football. Let me, let me go. Yeah. Right. That's good. You still have it. Come to the ranch. Uh, well, thank, thank you. Have a good day.
thank you. Have, have a nice great Christmas, Christmas yeah. and great New Year. Yeah. 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 Have a happy New Year, too. And, and if anything I can do to help you uh, down the stretch, let me know. I will. Especially if it's a tough job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank okay. you. See you. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Of Nebraska. Hello there. Hi. Nice to see you. Hi. Mickey McCall, North Carolina. Hey, right. Tell me what this you. Kevin Oshner, Colorado. President of Terry Hames, Oklahoma. Hello. Bill Hollis, Illinois. Dunla. I'm an old Illinois. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dunla Du from Louisiana. And Tony Hart, the one's program. Well, I understand you had a very fine conference in Kansas City. Sure did. Want to try to move in? that the six of us have the opportunity to bring you holiday greetings because we have over 430,000 FFA members across our country who would like to say Merry Christmas. And personally, we would like to tell you that although we realize that there are a lot of difficulties with the budget or deficit or whatever it may be, we right here today would like to say thank you for everything that you have done so that we as American youth can enjoy the freedom that this country is built upon. God bless you and thank you all very much. I feel grateful to all of you for what you're doing. You personally, sir, just, you are the epitome of what we build our organization upon in your gentle nature and your loving touch, but most of all your commitment to American youth, your commitment to God, to mankind, and also to our country. And so we find it appropriate at this time to say thank you for all the service that you've given our country but also good luck as your final year as President of the United States of America. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try to deserve it. <laughs> we have a, a message of Christmas hope to share with you. It is a poem entitled Take Time, which was written just two short weeks before a young FFA member, Sherry Nelson from Melba, Idaho, was killed in a plane crash oh, yes. upon returning home from our convention. Okay. Take time, Mr. President, to enjoy life. To laugh and cry each day as it comes, but don't let life pass you by. Take time to recall the good times shared with old friends and loves, but don't live in the past. Take time to wonder what the future may bring, but live for today, because today is everything. Take time to share yourself with friends and family too, and remember, take time to love, for those who love can be loved too. Thank you very much. <laughs> we would be honored if you could join us next November in Kansas City for our 61st annual FFA convention. But President Reagan, it has been an honor, and we thank you for taking time to share with us this afternoon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As you know, I don't have a hundred percent control over <laughs> <laughs> telling me every once in a while, 15 minutes, what I'm going to do. <laughs> Is, uh, has there been any? Notice of that or anything sent so that. Uh, yeah, we'll, so you, we'll work with them and see if we can work with them. All right, because I would like very much to do that. We'll look forward to seeing <laughs> you. Where is it going to be? In Kansas City. In Kansas City. Kansas City. Kansas City. Everywhere. 24,000 members joined us this year and we're planning to break that record. I remember a convention in Kansas City. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. That's the huge. I know there are all kinds of doors. <laughs> These are key rings. And with the 
seal of the United States. Gentlemen, which I'd just like you to have as souvenirs of your Thank you, sir. visit here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll tell you a little history. I know that we've got to hurry and let other people in here, but a little history note about that seal on there. If you look up there, you <coughs> see that the eagle is turned and is heading toward the claw that is holding the olive branch, not the arrows. But on that ancient old desk there, if you looked at the seal, the eagle is facing the arrows. And it was after World War II that Harry Truman decided to have our sign changed the other way. Six months of school to go through first. Oh, you we have, I guess we have a retention problem. I'm not sure. <laughs> Start over. You'll we'll we'll have a little, a little time yet for some horseback riding. Oh yes, sir. A little. <laughs> this is my wife, Christy. Nice to see you again. Well, it's nice How are you? You look well. We were so proud of the way you handled the Russians. <laughs> Hello there. Nice to see you again. Hello there. This is my mother, Mr. President. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> this is my brother, Dennis. Well, I think you and I both Yes, sir, we get to stand by the fireplace. We'll be joined later. Oh, my brother, Dennis. Citation accompanying award to the Defense Superior Service Medal. <clears throat> Major Ronald D. Thomas, United States Army, has distinguished himself by exceptionally superior service as Army aide to the President since May 1986. Major Thomas continually displayed superior leadership, exemplary foresight, and tireless effort, which were of paramount importance to the President and the nation. In this highly visible position, he routinely planned and coordinated numerous events of national and international significance. His role as an emergency actions officer was accomplished with expertise and professionalism. Major Thomas served as the White House agent responsible for supervising the use of Department of Defense resources supporting Commander Chief travel throughout the world, including both Canada and Berlin in 1987. The distinctive accomplishments of Major Thomas reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Army, and the Department of Defense. It's hard to believe I did all that in 20 minutes. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. It's been my pleasure. 
I think uh, we have one more little thing we're yes. going to do. Yes, I know. Yes, I think Chrissy's going to assist you with this. You come. You want to come to my left? Motion ceremony in honor of Major Ronald D. Thomas. By direction of the Secretary of the Army, Major Ronald D. Thomas is authorized to wear the insignia of a Lieutenant Colonel on 17 December 1987 in view of his nomination by the President and confirmation by the Senate for promotion to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Army. By order of the Secretary of the Army, Carl E. Vuono, General, United States Army, Chief of Staff. I think I'll need to pull those two off. I'll do that Staff officer with a state seal, circa 1865. So from one cavalryman to another, and from uh, an aviator to a Army Air Corps officer, I wanted to give you these, and uh, just as a little memento. No, for him. these are buttons from from, uh, from the Civil War, yes, sir. And they were. I don't know the. Uh, I guess I'll have to make up a story and send you the name about who the officer. Was. <laughs> But uh, that's what they're from. They're from the Civil War, and they were worn by some staff officer from Illinois. Well, thank you very much. <coughs> thank you. Yes, sir. My pleasure. And thank you for uh, two good years. I've enjoyed it. Well, and uh, I'll be serving you still in the Army. But uh, yes. if you ever need on me, you can always call. Me. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for all yes, the service done. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, please come. 